Welcome back people, we got another moto blog for you guys here today. It's been a little while since I've been able to get out on the bike, take it for a ride, but uh, because of the lockdown situation. So because of that, obviously I haven't been really been able to go out and give this thing a bit of a drive. Unfortunately my speedo stopped working where the bike's just been sitting there for a while. Um, so yeah, because my speedo's not working, I have to be very careful and kind of stick with the speed of the traffic so that way I don't go too fast or too slow. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, it's nice to get out on the bike. Got to go out and get a bit of food as I don't really have any. So I thought as I'm going to get some food, I might as well put the camera on my chest and have a chat with you guys. Uh, left, uh, no, yeah, let's go left. Yeah, so yeah, I decided to do a little moto blog. It's been a short minute. We do live stream games. I use face camera mic and obviously we upload other gaming videos, unboxing videos, all different types of stuff on the channel we do. I do that just to kind of mix it up and um, just so it's a little something different every now and again. But this is a Honda Pez 125, that's P-E-S. These bikes come in different models. They're also known as like a PCX, which is quite a popular Honda bike. But yeah, this is a Honda PES. That you can also get this as a Honda PES, uh, just PS. So yeah, uh, different types of models of this bike. This one is a 2008 model, and I've had around between 60 and 70 ish when the speedo was working. I had around about 60 to 70 miles ish out on the flat, and it didn't seem like the engine was screaming. It was quite a comfortable solid ride even though this bike is very old I think it's done nearly 225,000 kilometers so <laughs> this bike has seriously gone some distance I bought this bike um, I think it was an, an ex delivery bike I don't know the guy didn't say but I'm guessing that just because of the mileage the temperature gauge on the left still works and also the gauge on the right for the fuel works um, oil lights and everything work I have changed the oil in this bike I don't know why I didn't make a video on it I kind of should really but very easy to do an oil change and it's quite a cheap bike to actually keep on the road it doesn't yeah it's like it's it's this bike since I've had it it's only not started once and that was um, the guy that I brought it from told me that he brought a new spark plug and stuff like that there ended up being a 6 volt battery in this bike even though it's meant to be 12 volt I don't even know how that started the bike but the bike did start one day I went to the bike, it didn't start, and the battery drained very fast. Now, I didn't use the bike for a little bit, but the battery still shouldn't have drained that fast. I only left the bike sitting for about a month, and I looked and noticed there was a 6 volt battery in the 12 volt motorbike. So the first thing I did was buy a gel battery. Now, you don't have to buy a gel, it could be a lead acid or a gel, or, or um, there's another there's another type of battery you can get, I've forgotten what it's called, but anyway, there's different types of batteries you can get for these motorbikes, but it seems like that guy there, it's a good job I was going quick, because he was just going to go straight forward, which would have been a tight squeeze, it kind of kind of silly there that he was going that quick, coming down into a blind corner, but anyway, yeah, I've got a gel battery in here, in here. I brought that, that cost me around about, I think it's size 68 pounds, and I put that in and I was still having the problem with starting. The battery didn't die, but it just still wouldn't start. So I then, again, the guy did say to me, he changed all the spark plugs and he changed a few bits and pieces, which was a complete lie. I took the spark plug out. Uh, he said he fit the new spark plug before I had it. Now I was driving it around for a month before it didn't start. And when I looked at the spark plug, it was so black. It looked like it was in there forever. Since I've changed the spark plug three months later, it still starts first time every time on the electric start. Unfortunately, these bikes do not have a kick start, which is a little bit of a shame because there's only one way to start this bike and that's electric start. So every time I drive around, I always make sure I've got a socket on me <laughs> and a spare spark plug. Just, it's, they don't weigh very much. You could even just leave them sitting in the dashboard or in the dash there's a little small glove box very small one but you could fit it in there or you could even leave it under the seat i always keep it in my rucksack i always have a rucksack on me in this case obviously i even more so because i'm going to get food but yeah i always carry a spare spark plug and the tools for me to able to undo the spark plug and obviously remove the panels and stuff i always keep a screwdriver small screwdriver 
just so that way I can always get this bike started if the spark plug ever becomes an issue. The bike itself is very very smooth and as you can tell it is fuel injected. I think it's twin fuel injected if I'm honest. This bike is very very nippy and I'm surprised about that because this engine has done as I said an insane amount of mileage and this bike still has so much power. The pan front panels are not in the best condition if I'm honest but I don't worry too too much about the plastic panels they're things that I can repair um, well use plastic welding I can do that myself or even buying a new a new new bits of plastic the main most important thing is the the engine itself as long as the engine is good and reliable that's that's what I always look for on bikes and then I repair the panels over time and adjust certain things but same goes as you can see the dashboard is kind of like a light gray when it's meant to be a dark gray again that's just where the person who owned it before me has left the bike sitting outside and I'm putting a sheet over it's discolored you can use black shoe polish and many other different types of things to make that from gray to go back to the very dark gray that it <laughs> originally was but again yeah that's not really too too important it's not majorly important it doesn't matter too much but for the best part of it the indicators work the back brake light works and when I pull the brake obviously the brake light works the brakes are good works really well and unfortunately I am going to be making another moto blog but unfortunately very very soon it looks like the motor blo moto blogs are going to stop which they stopped once before because I had really big money problems um, changing jobs and stuff but now I'm gonna come to the point where I'm not gonna be able to drive this bike again because not so much money problems I can afford to keep this bike running kind of <laughs> I struggle but I can keep it on the road and I love messing around on this bike this is a really steep hill and it has no problem getting up any type of hill <coughs> and yeah unfortunately my motor blogs are gonna be coming to a stop I'm gonna make one more motor blog and then after that it is going to be coming to a stop because of the coronavirus COVID-19 I can't renew my license they're not doing any tests and my license is about to run out in about a month and a few weeks time so yeah there will be one more motor blog after this but after that unfortunately that is going to be the very end of the motor blogs and that kind of sucks really because I don't know what it is about me being on a motorbike driving around um, just random places driving around and just talking to the camera I, I don't know why there's just something that I really like about doing these moto blogs and this is the hill that we went up once before just going up here again just because I, I, like going up here this is quite a steep steep hill this one and I can easily go foggy all the way up there no problem at all and I know my speedo ain't working Okay, yeah, the road's closed. I know my speedo ain't working right now, but as I said, it was working once before and I came up here at a steady 40 miles an hour. And I've had quite a few different motorbikes now, different mo mopeds and scooters, and I've come up this hill with so many different bikes. I've specifically come to this area just to go up this hill to see how well it does, because this is quite a steep hill from the bottom to the top. And yeah, it this bike has definitely been the most quickest bike going up this hill this is in Brighton this is yeah that this I've never had a bike take me up that hill at 40 it's always been around 25 to 30 I'm quite a heavy lad as it is anyway I'm you know I'm like 16 and a half stone and I weigh um, well that's my weight and my height is nearly six foot three so well six two six three in between that so yeah I weigh a lot and I'm very heavy very big and this bike gets me up this hill no problem and the other good thing is is skipping through traffic that's the reason why you want to get a motorbike one not only it's cheap to run this thing but most important of all is doing what I'm doing now it's called filtering it's not against the law cars don't really like it so sometimes I do sit in traffic and I just wait but if I'm in a rush like I am here I need to get food fast <laughs> <laughs> at this point I'm actually really hungry and I don't have any food so I'm going to do the shopping so it is really good for cutting through traffic so you don't have to sit in big traffic like this and um, as long as you be respectful and you keep checking in your mirrors all the time and you move at the right times it's completely you are completely allowed to do it you are allowed to 
basically go straight to the front of the, the traffic <laughs> and some cars don't like that but it is the way it is that's the advantages of having a motorbike it's cheap to run cheap to get through traffic uh, fast to get through traffic and you don't have to wait around and take so long so look at that I come straight to the beginning <laughs> the light goes green and away I go yeah so pretty decent I don't have to sit in traffic all the time I know I've drove around this place around here before on a video I'm pretty sure I have but I just wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the bike because before it was just me showing the bike but yeah more me talking about it it's been very reliable so far and because I'm so tall it's really really good the Yamaha that I had once before was okay but my knees always hit the handlebars as I turned because my legs are too long on this bike I have is not like that at all there's plenty of plenty of space for my legs as you can see the gap between the handlebars and my knees is actually quite a bit of a distance there as well so it means the handlebars do not hit my knees as I'm going around corners which is kind of dangerous if that is the case and you know on the Yamaha I used to have to open up my legs wider squeeze my legs close into each other to stop that from happening but with this bike I don't have to so I hope you guys did enjoy this moto blog don't forget to drop a like thanks for everyone sharing my content recently I appreciate you guys loads of you keep doing that it helps me grow as a creator and don't forget to subscribe as well for the last moto blog maybe in the future I could try and get more more moto blogs if I manage to get my license back I don't know how it's gonna work or what's gonna happen but only time will tell um, but it's a, it's a sad day for me recording this because I know there's only gonna be one more blog after this until I don't know when but yeah don't forget to subscribe keep an eye out for future updates and um, yeah thanks for people sharing the content dropping a like we catch you people again soon for some more fun and games I'm out